This video is intended to be a refresher on how to use calculus to calculate your uncertainties in the lab. Now your lab instructor either already has or soon will be showing you how to do this, so this video is mainly intended to be just a refresher in case you feel like you didn't quite get that and you'd like to see somebody go through it again. And by the way, there also is a short section on this in your lab manual, so you might want to read through that also. Now we use this formula to calculate all of our uncertainties in this course. So this makes use of calculus in that we're going to be taking the derivative of some function with respect to a variable. Now you'll notice that there's stuff in here and it's all squared. And same thing here, this stuff is squared and this stuff is squared. So it's three things that have been squared and then added together and square rooted. And it might occur to you that that kind of looks like Pythagoras' theorem. And there's a reason for that, is essentially what we're doing here is calculating the length of a vector in uncertainty space. So that's kind of interesting, but not super important to you. So at this point, you've taken a calculus class, so you do know how to calculate the derivatives of an expression. However, we need to take you one step farther than where you left off in that course, because we need to teach you how to take a partial derivative. So what's a partial derivative? Well, if you've got some function that has more than one variable, you can take the derivative with respect to just one of the variables, and you treat the other two, or the other however many there are, as constants. And so in this expression, a, b, and c are all measured values, they have uncertainties, but we're going to take the derivative of f with respect to just one of the variables at a time. So I'm going to take the derivative of f with respect to a to begin with. And by the way, when you're doing a partial derivative, we have a slightly different symbol for the delta. So I'm going to treat this expression as if b and c are constants and a is the only variable. So my derivative would be b over c, because the derivative of a is just going to be 1. So this is 1 times my two constants. Now I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to treat b as the variable and a and c as constants. So derivative of f with respect to b is going to give me a over c times 1, because the derivative of b is just going to be a 1. And then I do it again for c. So partial derivative of f with respect to c is going to be what? Well, it's c to the negative 1. So I'm going to treat a and b as constants. So I'll have a negative 1 ab over c squared. So these three guys here, these are my partial derivatives. I'm going to plug them into these three locations in my expression to calculate the uncertainty on f. So let me do that now. The uncertainty of f is going to be a big square root, and I want the partial derivative with respect to the first variable. So that's this guy here, so partial derivative with respect to a. So it'll be b over c, just what I calculated here, and it gets squared, and then it gets multiplied by the uncertainty of the variable that I was differentiating with respect to. So this is the uncertainty of a, so delta a, uncertainty of a, and it also gets squared. So this is my first term here. And now I'm going to do my second term. So partial derivative with respect to my second variable, that's b, and the answer was a over c. So a over c, again it gets squared, and then multiplied by the uncertainty of b, because that's what I was differentiating with respect to. So uncertainty of b, also squared. And then we just do it again for c. So partial derivative with respect to c was this squared times the uncertainty of c, also squared. And then all of it inside a square root. So this is my uncertainty on a times b over c, found using calculus. Now at this point you may be thinking, you know, I learned a whole bunch of rules for calculating the uncertainties in physics 1101 or 1120. Where did those actually come from if this is the answer it's supposed to have? Well, let's take a, b over c, the final answer, out of this expression. So I'm just rewriting it, but I'm going to take a, b over c and factor it out. And what does that leave me with? Well, if I take a, b over c out of this part of the expression, I end up with delta a over a squared. If I take a, b over c out of this, I end up with delta b over b squared. If I take it out of here, 
I'm going to be left with a c squared on the bottom, so I'll have delta c over c squared. And of course, this is exactly the expression you were given in your previous course for the uncertainty when you've got multiplication and division. This is the multiplication division rule. So in your previous course, you hadn't taken calculus yet, so we just gave you the answers. But this is where they come from, this calculus expression. So the next question people tend to ask is, well, gee, can I just keep using those expressions that you gave me in the previous course? Because I've already got them memorized. Unfortunately, the answer is no. We do require you to use calculus from now on. And there's a reason why, so let me show you that. So say you want to calculate the uncertainty of this expression here, a times b plus a times c. Now one thing you'll notice is you can factor out the a, so you could equally well write it as a times b plus c. So if you use those prescriptive rules that you learned in physics 1101 or 1120, when you calculate the uncertainty of this expression, you're going to wind up with this. So they used the multiplication division rule to sort out the uncertainty of this little bit, and again the multiplication division rule to sort out the uncertainty of this little bit, and then they used the addition subtraction rule to stitch them together. However, if you were applying those same rules to this guy, then you'd end up with this uncertainty. So in this case, they applied the multiplication division rule first, and then used the addition subtraction rule later, and nested the uncertainty inside this other uncertainty. So just by factoring out the a, we get a different expression. Well, are these equivalent? They're supposed to be. So if we simplify these down, what do we get? Well, here's where we notice that we've got a problem, because if you simplify it down, what you'll find is that this expression gives you this, and this expression gives you this, which is exactly the same, except that it's got an extra term over here. So that's not supposed to happen, and which one is correct? Well, if you apply this calculus method here to either of these expressions, you get this answer. So this one is incorrect, this one is correct, and the only thing that was different is that we remembered to factor out that extra a. So this is why we require that you use calculus from now on, is that it doesn't matter what form your expression is in, this will always give you the correct answer. Whereas if you use those prescriptive rules that you learned in the previous course, certain expressions will actually underestimate your uncertainties, which means your values are less likely to agree with an uncertainty. So now I'm going to do one last example, just to make sure you've got it. So my function in this case is going to be 3a times sine b minus a. And so I first want to find my partial derivative with respect to a, and then later I'll get it with respect to b. Now I've got a appearing in two places here, so I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So I'm taking the derivative of this expression with respect to a, treating b as a constant. And so I'm going to treat this as my first function, and this is my second function, and use the chain rule on this. So derivative of this guy is just going to be 3, and then times this expression. And then I take the derivative of this guy, and this one does not get affected. So that'll be 3a times the cosine of b minus a times negative 1 because that is a negative a in there. So I'm going to bring this negative 1 over here. So I wind up with 3 sine b minus a minus 3a cosine b minus a. So that's my derivative with respect to a. And now I'll do it again, but this time a will be treated as a constant. b is what I'm differentiating with respect to. And this would give me 3a times the cosine of b minus a times 1, because that is a positive b. And so this is my second partial derivative. And so now I plug these two into here. So the uncertainty of my expression f, which is this guy here, is then going to be a big square root, this expression, so 3 sine b minus a, minus 3a cosine b minus a, all of that squared times the uncertainty of a squared. And then plus, and now we'll assemble this term, 3a cosine b minus a, 
squared, sorry, ran out of space, and then all of that times the uncertainty of b squared, and then all of it inside a square root. So it's a more complicated expression, but again, we're still just using this prescription here where we have two terms. So the nice thing about using this calculus method is it's always the same expression, and you can apply that to any function with any number of variables. So if you're still having trouble with this, do contact your lab instructor. We're happy to give you some one-on-one -on -one time to figure this out.